sort of got all enthusiastic. Um, and uh, I was looking at what your blog? Page. What blog? Uh, the one that you did, your, the, the last one that you did that came up in my feed. Um, hold on. Mm. Let me just uh, get to it. Here we are. Right, well, we had our chat yesterday, OK, and at one point in, in the chat, you said, oh, it's all it, it's all done with swaps when we we're talking about 2012. Yeah. And of course, yeah. we're talking about looking at a, a long range of stuff, but particularly looking at the run up to t uh, the 2019 election. So mm. your interview with Bob Gill on mm. the great NHS swindle is brilliant, is absolutely brilliant. And, and he really yeah gets he's the good. meat of, of a huge issue okay of course that contrasted with the stay at home save lies protect the nhs is i mean it's just so disingenuous um uh, and has been for that whole two years and of course at the time of the 2019 election you had boris hiding in a fridge because he didn't want to answer the questions about a child sleeping on coats in a corridor in an NHS mm. hospital, obviously all mm. pre-pandemic. So yeah. there's that Bob Gill interview. And, and then you've got two interviews with David Graeber, right? Now, um, and they're the two most popular interviews on, on your whole channel. Yeah. Um, now, if I'm like, I, I haven't got your you know your statistics or whatever um yeah but it, uh you know if you if you if you click on the sort by most popular on your videos number yeah. one is david on the yellow vest david grave in the yellow yeah. vest um that was 2019 i think uh, late, late 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 very end of 2018 oh right and you've got another one David Graeber, December 2018, six and a half thousand views, which is the long, I don't know if that's the longer one. Uh, then you've got the picture of Henry Kissinger with uh, Ursula von der Leyen, that's hey. number three. Uh, number four, you've got from upskirt to Brexit. Um, then you've got the one, the CIA heard of, murdered my dad. That's where you interview the guy in the in in in, in the thing. Yeah. And then number five is Babylon Health CEO Ali Parser at Davos in the desert, 2019. Right. Mm. Now, what that tells me is that obviously people that look at your channel, um, I mean, they're all great interviews. The the, the ones with. The, Bob Gill, the great NHS heist, is uh, at number 13. At number 12 mm. is, is, is the one you did outside of the court with um, Roger Hallam, Extinction Rebellion. Uh, OK. Yeah. Right. But yeah, kind of. Now, in, in terms of um, looking at David's stuff, of course, David died, didn't he, last year? It was it was last year, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, and as you know, I mean, I'm a big fan of David's work, although you know, I've got, got I always had my reservations. But but um, I hadn't seen before though, and I I came across it because I looked at your video today. Um, the Peter the, Thiel. The Peter Thiel debate or discussion conversation really it's not really a debate um mm. but it but it's interesting to look at it and it was in 2015 uh, was it 2015 i think i don't know i've never watched it it's it really is worth watching um it, 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 it there's also a bit of that th there's a bit of audio of i think it's peter teal or it might be Sergi Brin actually talking in a cafe with Julian Assange way back when, a long time before this. Okay. Uh, so it would have been in the 2000s before the um, before the arrest warrant and the Swedish thing. Um, but of course, 
David and Teal are talking about Palantir and they do talk about um, Snowden. Uh, and Peter Teal kind of is claiming to be a political agnostic. So I just did a quick search. So I wonder if he's attended Bilderberg, which he did in 2018. And the Bilderberg site right. is quite interesting in that they do say uh, in the more recent ones what they talked about um, and who attended. Right. So 2021 mm. were cancelled. Uh, now, I have got and it is available on the Internet, the minutes from the 1973 meeting, which was in Sweden. Um, and what's interesting about that is that it's just got two headings of what they talked about in 1973. The minutes show that they talked about a hell of a lot more than these two things that they said. Uh, some people mm. have interpreted it of them anticipating the Nixon shock and all the rest of it. Um, or, or, or certainly responding to OPEC's moves uh, in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the huge increase in, 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 in oil prices, you know, around that time. Um, and then, of course, at the end of the Teal uh, uh, and Graver debate or conversation, Palantir comes up and uh, that is fascinating. Um, and it, it kind of, I mean, it does put him on the spot, really, uh, because, um, I mean, and obviously Palantir, but also Ali Parsa, and then also some of the things that um, uh, Bob Gill is saying about what's happening at the NHS, there, there's a real overlap there. And of course, Arthur mm. as well, and Infosys. And so you see, when you look at it, that what we were saying the other day, what were the issues and have, have they really changed? Is mm. it, you know, at the end of two years, um, what they've managed to do is obscure what had become a very clear um, uh, agenda of, of of things that would be on the agenda if 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 things being addressed were the things of importance, as opposed to, you know, my argument is is that when they're talking about you know when the discourse in the press is talking about sustainability and 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 uh, uh, the the great reset, what they're actually talking about is preserving the power structure, not actually preserving the existing goods within society. And I think that's that. That's quite clear to me from what Peter Thiel say. He keeps going on about oh, going to Mars because the premise of their conversation is they both grew up um, as baby boomers, if you like. And in the early 70s, everybody thought that technology was going to go, you know, into all sorts of wonderful stuff that never happened. So they're saying what happened to the future? Um, and I, 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 I miss I miss that uh, it, the, the, the connection cut. But I think you were saying something to do with what may have been a, a famous Peter Thiel strap line, which was um, they promised us flying cars. All we got was 140 characters. That's right. He and that's he's got a book out at the time. And, and obviously Dave is referring to that. But but the other thing that Thiel says a number of times is that technology has been more about bits than atoms. Um, so i.e. it's been information technology as opposed to uh, hard science or, you know, atoms, uh, material science, uh, you know, uh, advances in physical technology, as it were, uh, as opposed to information technology. They have a they have a talk about money as well, which is quite instructive. And it's at the time the Bank of England paper had come out, 
basically saying, oh, yes, there is a magic money tree. And so that's when mm. Teal starts talking about scarcity. Um, and there isn't enough time for either of them to go into that. It's only an hour long thing. Um, but the, the, the point about um, banking debt based money and, and the and, and scarcity is that bankers want to make the monetary unit scarce, um, which then means they can control uh, access to real resources. Um, and if you, you can do money that does actually reflect where the real scarcity actually is, uh, and by definition, um, in terms of a system of IOUs, which are merely promissory notes or contracts for debt, uh, you know, you can have as many of those as you like. Um, uh, obviously, uh, if there are too many of them for any particular class of goods or whatever, that can lead to problems. But but that's not really where the problems come from. The, pro the, 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 the problems come from the overarching power structure wanting to maintain the scarcity of the monetary unit and and at its heart that makes sense as a social control mechanism or a market manipulation or a monopoly mechanism but it, it, it it's really got it's got everything to do with uh, power politics and absolutely nothing to do with political economy let alone economics and if you have um, if you have qe at the same time as austerity then it's still staying scarce in the place where you want it to be scarce. Yes, and it's that, where, yeah, where you want uh, to be. And that's sort of that's a, that's that's a subset of the question, which is an important subset of the question, and why we we've, we've had you know inflating asset bundles and stuff like that, which which frankly has benefited people has benefited people like Peter Thiel. Um, so it, it, it is it is an interesting conversation and it's the sort of question uh, conversation which i haven't seen anyone having with klaus schwab and perhaps they should obviously david's not with us anymore to be able to, to do that um but i would be interested to see if there were any non blowing smoke up the arse of klaus schwab discussions about his great reset um Thank you. So yeah, I mean, I. So anyway, just 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 let me just get your your blog up, the one I'm referring to. Um, boom, ba -dum, boom, boom. Yeah, for some reason, there's a bit of a problem with the network. I assume that's my side. I don't know why. Oh no, it might be mine. I. It's. Let me just see if I can make sure my Wi-Fi is working properly. No. Yeah, I've got a problem with my Wi-Fi here. I, I, I think one. That should be much better. I've just plugged a hard wire into the back of uh, just put a bit of Cat5 cable into the back of my machine. That, that should see us all right. Can you hear me all right now, Ranger? Yeah. Cool. Right then. So. Um,
Right. So, yeah. So you put up your conversation with Piers Corbyn. Yeah. And you asked him about Ardhar, which he obviously knew absolutely nothing about. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, which you know, it's Fair kind enough. of disappointing, but not really surprising because it's it, it, it's basically buried. Um, yeah. Then history. Right, here we are. It was this one. Um, COVID passports and central bank digital currencies. So. Yeah. Which which I I I thought was really good. I mean, now you did that on November the twenty first. Um, um, and we've been. I mean, we have been developing this point for. Uh, you know, for. For a while, and I think we hit upon it a little while back. But but I think yeah, I, I do. I, I really do think it's really important, and I think it ties into what's happening with the NHS. Um, and then the the other thing that I rewatched this morning with the talk that David gave about the TTIP. Mm. Now. That has carried on regardless. I mean, it, it, a lot of this stuff, great reset stuff and all the rest of it is 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 that. Um, of course. And. There was a huge public backlash against that, so they know nobody's ever going to want to vote for it or go for that. Um, and so it's just a question of, well, distracts everybody with something else and just do it anyway. You know, modus operandi for for introducing the euro and all the rest of it, you know, Maastricht, you know, the Irish, all of that stuff. Um, and that talk of David's is really good. Did did you ever watch? Did you watch it when it originally came out? It was in 2015 uh, I, I have, I as have, well. I have watched it because I think it was a Green Hustings, wasn't it? Uh, it, it it wasn't. It was a talk to the Green Party in Scarborough, I think. But he, he, he OK, he 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 gave that talk all over the UK. Um, and there's a lot of really great information in it. Uh, and the good thing about it, I would say, is this, is that most people, when they talk about the Great Reset, um, kind of see it as an opportunism just around the pandemic, not letting a great crisis go to waste and all the rest of it. Whereas what it's actually is, is it's just a rehash of all of the objectives that really started coming into the public consciousness as far ago as NAFTA. So that's 92, isn't it? Um, as far ago, away as the um, World Trade Organization talks, the GATT, whatever, in, 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 in Mon was it Montreal? Do you, do you remember the, the I, I think that was 2009? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it might have been Ottawa. I, I'm not sure. Oh, but yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. It might have been Montreal. I'm not, I'm not, but. Uh, and then. Sort of success, su successively going through all of those. Yeah, it, it's like a slalom with a series of gates. And. Um, I mean, effectively, it, it, it's quite obviously going towards the finishing line on on the same slalom race. It, it's you know they've had the qualifying periods, all the rest of it, and and it's the last bit of the long course sort of thing. I mean, it just really, um, it really does well, all join up. Well, I think just as on the on the subject of joining up. Just as you very rarely hear a reference to the European Commission and the European Central Bank in the same sentence. I mean, you don't even see them appearing in the same article. You know, you just mm -hmm. don't. They, they are never referred to on the same page ever, even though they would be working together in many ways. 
Um, also, I remember about 20 years ago, the only time I ever went to America was for a World Bank uh, IMF uh, meeting. And I went to some of the teachings that were going on there and the protests, which was somebody from Public Citizen, the Ralph Nader organization invited me over. Uh-huh. And I remember when I when I went to one of the teachings that were more for activists that had come from around the world and NGO people, whoever, um, I remember noticing that they asked this question at the beginning. Do you focus on IFIs or trade? And I think IFIs was international financial institutions. So either as a campaigner, the whole campaigning world was structured the lines of either you look at the World Bank and the IMF and the multilateral development agencies or you look at trade um, and it was it, everything was kind of structured so that you didn't look at both at the same time uh, even though if you were just an activist they were both significant mm-hmm. um, and so that was quite interesting and I think um, that links in with your point about how these things are they all end up at the same finishing line but it's as if they're all motoring along differently. Yeah, well, there's the, as if they're different. Yeah, in in the film Inside Job, okay, and I, I think the guy that produced it or wrote it, or whatever, he's called Ferguson, something Ferguson. Charles Ferguson. Yeah, he and David are friends. Um, oh. And there's a there, there's a quote in that from George Soros, where he talks about individual compartments. And individual compartments is uh, in oil tankers and keeping things separate and all the rest of it. Soros gives this quote in, in that film. And of course, that's what it is. It's, it's, it, it, it's a way of divide and conquer or di- divide and allow plausible deniability for different areas within the same project. OK, so no one has the full project apart from people on a need to know basis. And that quote um, actually comes from a guy called Sir, Sir, Sir Arthur Osler, um, who basically uh, was a big wheel in the Carnegie organization or whatever. And, and, and it's uh, it's which kind of fits into this, ge- the general overall kind of corporatist uh, philosophy of these people i mean i mean when i heard sora say it in that film i immediately thought of that quote because i i i i don't i can't remember exactly when i first came across it but i i mean i've read a lot about all this stuff um and 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 anyway i mean it is it, it is on my conquest of money blog it, 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 this is one of the things that i uh, uh the, the did you say what was it compartmentalization what was the word yeah, let me. I'll, I'll 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 read you the. I'll I'll give you the exact bit because I know exactly where to find it on that website. Bob has an event on Thursday that I should go to. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> yeah, I've been asked to go, so. Well, you should go I should along. Go and... A bit of moral support. Mm. It's not a million miles away. It's in Southwark. Well, that's not far, is it? I'm aware. <laughs> There's me thinks I could find this really quickly and I'm struggling now. I haven't got a search blog on this. I haven't got a search box. That's a bit of a pain. Oh yeah, here it is. Look, right. Um, right. So 
George Soros said said this in in, in uh, this is at one minute eighteen and twenty seven seconds the inside job transcript from Sony Pictures September two thousand and ten page sixteen George Soros quote markets are inherently unstable or at least potentially unstable an appropriate metaphor for is oil tankers they are very big and therefore you have to put in compartments to prevent the sloshing around of oil from capsizing the boat the design of the boat has to take into account and, uh, and after the depression regulations actually introduced these very uh, tight watertight compartments and deregulation has led to the end of co-compartmentalization so that's what he says um and it's a good point uh, yes it, it it is a good point but it applies to a strategy also for managing stuff on a need to know basis so so anyway but here, here's here's sir william osler okay uh and it, it it's an address he gave to yale students in 1914 you know skull and bones yale and all of that okay uh and right where are we um how do you spell the name o-s-l-e-r sir william osler so the load of tomorrow added to that of yesterday carried today makes the strongest far falter to youth we are told belongs the future but the but the wretched tomorrow that so plagues some of us has no certainty except through today who can tell what a day may bring forth? Look heavenward if you wish, but never to the horizon. That way lays danger. Truth is not there, happiness is not there, but the falsehoods, the frauds, the quackeries, the ignis fatui, which have deceived each generation, all beckon from the horizon and lure the men not, cont not content to look for the truth and happiness that tumble out at their feet. Waste of energy, mental distress, nervous worries, dog the steps of the man who is anxious about the future shut close then the great fore and aft bulkheads and prepare to cultivate the habit of a life of day tight compartments do not be discouraged like every other habit the acquisition takes time and the way is one you must find for yourselves now the Soros quote and that quote to me come out of exactly the same kind of mindset um and i mean it's not a bad sort of uh thing to keep in mind for for for, for making sure you don't procrastinate and get on with what's in front of you um but quite equally when we talk about you know you're saying one one lot of people's looked at trade the other looked at finance um The picture is much bigger than than just that. So understand the full picture. You know, you need to. You, you have to know where where the things overlap. I mean, in a sales organization, if you like it, 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 it there's a thing called upselling, but there's another thing cr called cross selling. So if you sell something to someone and they know something else, you encourage your salespeople to cross sell or to be in touch with other people in other departments so that you can put forward that part of your product range as well um, but, but if you're going to be to understand the big picture you've got to have that it's, it's a cross fertilization of in-depth knowledge in different areas and that way connections spark off which otherwise wouldn't I mean it's the same with innovation as well I mean it, it's a point which uh, uh, James Burke, you know, the, the ex science editor, he, he makes that point in connections and all the rest of it, you know, that, uh, you know, the idea of uh, learned ignoramuses and all that sort of thing, do you know? So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 and I don't know about you, but I feel like we've really got somewhere the, the last week, mm. with our few discussions and stuff. Um, but I do think I do think the hard hard thing. Um, you mentioned in your blog uh, 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 the leading critic of hard hard. Well, sure, I'm um, another. Yes. So I went and had a look at what you know 
what she'd been saying and I and, and in looking for her I, I found an article about the Delhi farmers uh, and, and, oh you and mean you mean you mean that Piers referred to that he referred to yeah and it, and it you see they all link in together and the Delhi farmers I found an article about it where they are basically talking about um, in trade disputes IDS which yeah. David talks about and I mean, you know, back in the day when David did the uh, Icon Earth thing so this is going back to 1995 when he did Icon Earth he interviews that other famous Indian the physicist that's turned Vandana Shiva yeah but David interviewed her back in the day same program he interviews um, James Goldsmith's um, brother whatever he's Teddy. called Teddy, Teddy. Did, yeah uh, and of course it all goes back to that you know it all this all stems from um, like the beginning of Bob Gill's great NHS heist he's got Richard Nixon talking about the oh, idea of, um, of making money out of insurance and all that stuff right um, it, it, creating it a market all, yeah so so that stuff again uh, Peter Thiel and and, 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 and and David Graeber's talk it kind of stems from then as well that 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 was kind of a what it was was that things were getting too equal for the very close you know mm -hmm. the old feudal lords to hang on to their power and, and, and they decided to take it back via another class war the one which um, uh, Warren Buffett famously quoted saying yeah there is a class war and we're winning that you know I, th I think mm -hmm. that's in his book the snowball that you know I mean it's it's quite easy to find a quote of him saying that um, so so at the end of two years of, 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 of uh, and 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 looking at another another throw of the totalitarian dice which o Omicron or Omicron represents um, I do think it's high time that we all got back to the discussion which, which, which had resulted in the election of President Trump and in Brexit and those things I think came about because uh, so many of these supposedly intractable problems that you know people had figured out well hold on we, we figured out why this is all happening right and I think we just need to get back to that page you know well, put, one of put the away things put away the bee now and get back out you know the magazine as it were well one of the things that went on with that as well and I remember asking David what he thought of this was the various interpretations of the word deregulation because when Nigel Farage interviewed Marine Le Pen it was after Brexit and um, the thing is that Nigel Farage if you say the word deregulation he would not be able to hide his excitement. But if you say mm. deregulation to Marine Le Pen, she would say, no, 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 don't want to have anything to do with that. And I remember mentioning this to David in the interview. I'm sure it's included. I mean, I can't remember mm. what happened in it. But then when we did our first Join the Dots to summarise the different interviews that we'd done at Real Media over 2017, mm. then... Uh, we focused on this word regulation and the different people talking about the different interpretations of the word regulation, deregulation. And um, of course, TTIP is regarded as being deregulation. I'm pretty sure the Delhi farmers are not into deregulation. But of course, Trump got voted in in many ways on a deregulation ticket. I mean, it's very difficult to say that because it's just one thing he mentioned along the way. And it's definitely one thing that he did. So it's, but again, because the word itself is such a weird word, it's difficult to say because he openly said, you know, I will deregulate, I will deregulate, I will deregulate. Um, and so that's not the type of thing that, for example, Marine Le Pen would have ever said on any campaign trail. And that's, you know, in terms of going back to 2017, 
Uh, I remember also having a conversation with my then colleague Cam about deregulation and the way in which when Naomi Klein brought out her book, I can't remember if it was This Changes Everything or something like that. Um, basically, in America, they're very open about talking about deregulation and everybody knows what it means. Whereas over here, it was something that would never dare speak its name. You know, they would have things like the deregulation bill, but no one ever talked about it. So the Tory or bipartisan view on deregulation, that was what was pushing everything forward. And that's one of you could say that's one of the reasons why Jeremy Corbyn got voted in to sort of try and slow that down. But um, at the same time, uh, in America, they're much more upfront about it uh, and they get on with it. And everyone seems to have a higher degree of literacy about what the meaning of deregulation is in America. Whereas over here, it's as if it happens and people can kind of act like they know all about it. But, you know, your average citizen doesn't appear to get asked, you know, where are you yeah. on deregulation? But and I, I mean, remember it, thinking it is one of those, though, isn't it? It's deregulation for exactly global for corporations but more and more rules for everybody at the national level which effectively creates uh, an uneven Agreed. playing f field in favor of, of 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 the monopoly state rentier capitalists yeah. you know um crony capitalists well let's just call them what they are fascists so, I mean, if you talk about uh, Palantir, Babylon, for example, Deutsche Bank, these different types of organisations, Ardha and stuff like that. I spoke to an Indian the other day who was sitting next to me in the cafe. He was a psychiatrist and he said his his family had a pharmac generics firm in Kerala. Mm -hmm. um, and when I mentioned the fact that there was this Supreme Court hearing in India, where Indian government said we can't afford to allow Indians to have privacy because, you know, that, you know, we'll just lose so much money if we do that. Uh, so apparently the government lost the case, but he just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders and me looking at him at the same time. They might have lost the case, but it didn't make any difference because they still don't have any respect for it. So they might have mm. officially lost the case and Usha Ramanathan may have won the case. But, you know, she's still there doing what she's doing because, of course, it doesn't make any difference if you win or lose the case. Uh, mm. That stuff's going to happen anyway, just as it's happening with TTIP and everything else. Like you said, it will happen in different ways. But as for us piecing it together, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we're noticing different factoids, different events, different issues. And then when it comes to tying it all together, I think it's I mean, I really, really value the fact that we have the opportunity to do this. Um, and of course, as well as doing that research for our own sakes, then there is the other thing of also um, maybe helping other people uh, see what's happening just as we are able to. Um, yeah, well, David makes a point at the end of his TTIP talk and, and, and basically says that no one else is going to figure this stuff out. You know, people need just need to put their heads together and and get on with it. I mean, funnily enough, in the in, in the teal and, and uh, 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 graver debate, they, they, they have this discussion about uh, look don't ask for permission get on and do it and then if you need to ask for forgiveness afterwards but you know I, I, well Horace said he's started as half finished I mean so it and it needs to be a big conversation that starts somewhere um, r rather than rather than two clacks blowing raspberries at each other. I mean, that, 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 which is what, what the discourse has been reduced to after two years of circling around the same red herring, i.e. COVID-19, right? Well, I remember, or, I remember, or, or, I remember or, or his... certainly the response to COVID-19 and, and, okay. and, you know, the, 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 the separating into two large groups and then subsets in that of maskers anti-maskers vaxxers anti-vaxxers it's a very very tom and jerry narrative and i mean that's a propaganda stream you know they, they've it's really very, done their job it, it, very well 
yeah, it can be it can be quite frustrating. It can be a little bit frustrating for me, you know, realizing, oh, my God. When it comes to hearts and minds, there are certain people who have, if I put things on my Facebook feed, they'll be outraged by them. Uh, and these well, people, the, I like this them. is interesting about the, the comment that came on your. You know, I put a comment on and and and, and this comment sort of saying, why should we listen to Piers Corbyn? A perfectly varied comment. Why why listen to Piers Corbyn? Well, if for no other reason, because even he hasn't put together two and two about Ardha. Yeah, um, you know, uh, uh, um, and what that is now. The people who say, why should we listen to him would probably say, ah, but that's because he's hiding it. You know, he, he, he's obscuring that on purpose. He's pushing a different thing just to get us away from, you know, he hasn't, you know, it, he's not a true believer in the correct sense of, you know. Uh, what, what so, do you mean? What do you mean? That, that, that people, it, that people it, would say this that group, he doesn't it, understand. It, it, he doesn't well, understand central banks and Aadhaar. Some therefore... people will say he's controlled opposition. Other people will say he's a game right. Other people will say that he's, you know, just a narcissistic attention seeker. You know, other people will say, oh, he's a climate denier, so he doesn't know anything anyway. Uh, and so there are 101 reasons why people would take a position against him rather than actually listening to what he says and taking those points and even from his position and how he presents himself uh it's ever so hard not to react against that sort of um like personal attack or those assumptions that people make about us you know one what you know uh yeah and so the thing is, if people have those questions, it's, it's a really good way of opening a conversation. It's kind of like, so why why did you say that? Now, th I know there's a video a couple of months back, I think in a para, uh, you know, with a, his purple beret on, uh, challenging uh, Corbyn. Uh, uh, someone offered him money or something to do an interview, which he was going to accept. And, and there was a huge uproar about this. And it appeared in the yeah. popular press or whatever. Uh, and he answered this question to this guy and this guy said, all right, all right fair enough, you know, take. Uh, um, but there will be still people sort of that, that, that will still be sort of saying, aha, you know, that's that's that then, you know. Um, yeah, the I, 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 I've never met him. I, 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 I listened to a lot of his climate talks um, and, you know, looked at a lot of his stuff. Uh, he. He used to do a regular show with Mark Windows on Windows on the World Sunday evenings, okay. and I used to, I used to listen to that quite a lot a couple of years ago. It, 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 it again, it's moved off YouTube now and onto something else, and I haven't listened to it for a while. Uh, but you know, they they they've done a lot of really good, um, you know, really good stuff. Um, so you know, I. I I don't know if they'd all been to the pub before you put that thing up yesterday. They all, they all looked a bit merry to me or seemed, you know, quite happy with their little chants and things. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, it's a funny one because lefty chants are, um, you know, I used to find them ridiculous. But now, you know, when I see him do it there, it's a bit like if you've all gone out and taken some E and someone says, Oh, I'm not sure, you know, feeling a bit down. Then you need someone to say everything's absolutely brilliant and everyone's happy again. <laughs> um, so I, it's a bit I, like, you know, a bit of the old hip, hypnotism from the cult leader. Oh, it always it makes me cringe always. Um, yeah, it just does. <laughs> it wait, wait, you divide, know, when they do that, do not all repeating it so everyone can hear that they do. At yeah. the, you know, uh, it. It frightens the living bejeebus out of me. It, it's it's kind of like the attack <laughs> of the zombies, you know. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> I, I I find I, rather than bringing people together, I, I I mean like communal singing, I love. You know, if people sing a song or something, uh, but that sort of chanty, mm. uh, hypnotic type of stuff, it, it to me it seems to channel a completely different kind of energy. It's much more controlling. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. It's authoritarian, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's quite yeah. gangster. Well, you know, whatever. It just freaks me out. It, it, it just freaks me out. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I haven't looked at this. This this guy here. You've got this: the future of America, social scores, CBDC, health passports, and stuff. Oh, that's actually, really I'm, good. I, I might really have good. seen that one actually. I, he's an interesting guy. He does a lot of money stuff, it, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. No, that's George it, Gammon. Really good. I mean, it. obviously, you know, I. I yeah, full on libertarian that guy, but um, you know he's uh, he he just helps join the dots. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, cool. Um, I, what what I was what I was doing before we spoke was um, I'm trying to blog from my phone, and I'm having some difficulty uploading images. So you know I've been googling, and I have to go on to. It says that I have to do ftp stuff okay so i've yeah. just so i've just downloaded an ftp app and then i'm going to follow the instructions so that hopefully i can then upload images onto my wordpress uh, app right. and then i'll be kind of happy because that way i'll be able to go walkies because you know i need to get my steps in and and, and whilst doing so um you know what upload you stuff it, it might be quicker and less of a hassle to to just have a um a, a picture uploading thing where you just put the url in and that will get the picture from the url in wordpress as opposed to having to faff about with ftp in the code because oh, when it's on your phone yeah. trying to cut and paste if you just have to copy and paste the url so things like photo bucket for instance used to be very good I, you know some sort of equivalent of that if there's a, a photo book bucket it's free up to a certain amount so you know as long as you oh, got... so i can so i can chuck my photos from my phone into something else which will generate a url and i can use that and okay. take the url in and it will come up you know it'll recognize it already in the thing and you won't have to bother with with faff because it is a faff you know you know with a yep. touch screen trying to put you know ftp code into a it, it, into an html canvas as it were yeah i mean i was hoping it was going to be a one-off thing that i have to do and then never have to worry about it again but um uh if uh, it, it, it's, yeah. it, it's easier to upload the thing that's the other thing is that you know you can upload media already to the media file so insert media upload the picture and then embed it that way and you won't have to do it on an FTP site then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, yeah, um, because normally it does both at the same time for me, but um, I'll try and just upload the media into my phone anyway. Well, that's probably much it. easier because if you say insert media and then it'll ask you up to upload the paper, the, the, the picture, and it will do it all for you in the embed image thing. Yeah, if I've already uploaded the image to my library. Uh, no, no, well, no, but you can upload to the library on the hoof and that will do it for yeah. you then. OK, and yeah, you won't yeah. have to faff I'll, around with FTP then because that's already in the back end of WordPress. Yeah, because I can't I can't tell if it's giving me all this FTP stuff as a security thing or not. But either way, I was worried that maybe my images were too big. And I thought, how can my new phone have images that are too big for WordPress? You know, yeah. you know I don't know. I, it could be. Well, well why, do, why don't you try one out? I mean, I. Is it the same on? Because I I don't use a mobile phone to do that stuff. But I, certainly if I if I do yeah I'll try it now. So I got WordPress up. So if I say write, so if I'm going to write an article, so that that you then get the thing that you're going to do your blog with your template. At the top left, there's an add media. Yeah. Um, right. So if if, okay. if you if you go add media. Right. Uh, and say upload files you just where it says select files you go select that from your photo library on your phone of whatever it is you could even do a video yeah and then you just insert it into the post and now i'm on wordpress yeah so here we go uh choose from device um 
I'll pick this one. Go like that. Then bottom right, say insert into post. And the thing I like about that is Let's when the image comes up, you can actually put a URL into it for what the the video or whatever the picture. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's taking its time. I'm not too hopeful. Um, well, you, the it just says uploading, just so it says uploading. Because well. yeah. before it says you can't. Well, oh, it, it says unable media. Um, so maybe it's the format that your pictures on your phone are are, are being saved as, because it will take JPEGs. Yeah, maybe. And, it, it, so you might need to just change the codec that you save your images in. It might be a proprietary Samsung codec or something as opposed to JPEG or PNG. So if you go in your settings, uh, I, and, and that will be way easier than than faffing about with FTP on a on a handheld device device. So so I might be able to on my Samsung go to uh, change the format that the photos are saved in. Yeah, it might be using a proprietary format for Samsung. I, I, I mean, I don't know, but, but yeah. there's there's no reason you shouldn't be able to upload a JPEG that way. I mean, I um, okay, good. Well, on the I'll get on at that home. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for talking me through that. I'll have a go at that now, and I'll um, talk to you later. No worries. Cheers, Ranjan. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye.